Hello everyone. Today's problem comes from uh, a viewer as a request, sort of a follow-up on a previous problem I did. Um, so I have posted on the screen right now a problem that I did recently. Uh, and if you read the whole problem, it's about this system of linear equations. And we have to find which of the statements given about this system is false. Uh, and if you go through the logic required to solve this problem, you don't actually need to solve the system of equations in order to figure out what the correct answer is. So the correct answer is option E. Option E is not correct. Uh, sorry, option E is a false statement. Um, but a viewer asked about the algebraic techniques for actually solving a system of equations like this. So what I'm going to do is just solve this system of equations and then we will verify, in fact, we'll see from the solution that um, statement E is a false statement. Um, probably what I will do here is use techniques of, uh, you know, substitution. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can solve a system of linear equations. Uh, Gaussian elimination uh, is probably one of the most, um, most well-known ones. Um, but because I know something that's going to happen with, um, you know, the structure of the solution based on having solved this other problem earlier, um, I'm going to use like a, a substitution technique. So I started with the first equation and just rearranged it so that I have W in terms of all the other variables. This will allow me to eliminate W from all the other equations. So this is the second equation in the system, and I'm going to use this to eliminate W. Okay, so starting with that second equation, eliminating W and simplifying gives this which now allows me to write x in terms of y and z. And what I'll do now is I'll use this and substitute back up into here. Uh, so not only will I have, uh, you know, I have x in terms of y and z, and when I make this substitution up there, I will then also have w in terms of only y and z. Okay, so now what I have is I have both x and w in terms of only y and z. So I'm going to continue this and substitute things into the third equation. I should now be able to eliminate, if I take the third equation, I'll be able to eliminate both w and x from it. Okay, so now we're starting to see hints about um, you know, the structure of these equations and, and the solution. When I do this substitution for w and x into the third equation, uh, we end up with cancellation of everything in the equation. We get zero equals zero. So what that's saying is that this equation is redundant in terms of the first and second. It's basically um, this equation gives us no new information, or you could say the equation is a linear combination of the other two equations. Um, and so it's, it's basically useless in trying to help us narrow down any of the solution. But that's going to give us a degree of freedom in spanning the solution set uh, at the end of all this. So now let's do the same thing with the fourth equation, 2w plus 5x plus 5y plus 6z equals 0. So if you look at this again and look at the coefficients on y and z, um, negative 10 plus 5 plus 5, so we have 0y. Negative 16 plus 10 plus 6 again gives 0 z. We get another 0 equals 0. So this is saying that the fourth equation is also redundant. So the fact that this happened twice, this sort of redundancy of equations, means that 
um, the solution to the system will have two degrees of freedom. This is how we know immediately that statement E is false because it says that every solution is a scalar multiple of one particular vector. Um, but that won't be true because we'll be able to have the, the solution space will be two dimensional. Um, if every solution were a scalar multiple of one vector, then the solution space would be one dimensional. Um, so if we want to write out the entire solution, because of I've already written W and X in terms of the variables Y and Z, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce what I'll call free variables. I'll call them S and T. And uh, we will parameterize everything in terms of S and T. So S and T are arbitrary real numbers. Let uh, Y be equal to S, Z be equal to T, then X is equal to uh, Y plus, it's Y plus 2Z, so that's S plus 2T, and W is equal to negative 5Y minus 8Z, so that's negative 5S minus 8T. So then any, any vector of the form negative 5s minus 8t, uh, s plus 2t, s and t, this is a solution for any s and t real numbers. So we have a two, because we have two free variables, um, the set of vectors which satisfies this system is going to be a two-dimensional two-dimensional subspace of four-dimensional space. And we can actually see um, we can actually see from this uh, structure here how this special vector negative 5, 1, 1, 0 comes out. If I let t be equal to 0 and s be equal to 1, remember I can let s and t be any real numbers and this thing will then be a solution. So let s be equal to 1 and t be equal to 0. This becomes negative 5. That's a 1, that's a 1, and that's a 0. So we have negative 5, 1, 1, 0, which is um, one of those. Uh, it's kind of like that special vector that everything was based off of uh, in the original problem. And so it's also easy to see that negative 5, 1, 1, 0 well, it, it is a solution. There we go. It's a solution corresponding to s equal 1 and t equals 0. Every multiple of this will also be a solution. Again, if we just let t be equal to 0, but if we let s be any other real number, then the output here would just be that multiple of, of this vector. But we can easily construct solutions which are not a multiple of this. So for example, if we let s equal 0 and t be equal to 1, then we get negative 8, 2, 0, 1. This is a solution. You could check very easily that this is, this is a solution by substituting these numbers into the system of equations. But this is clearly not a multiple of that vector. Um, so by actually going through and solving the entire, the entire problem, we see that statement E is false. Um, yeah, so this, was, um, this is one uh, of a few different ways of solving a linear system like this. Um, it's, I don't know if this has a specific name, back substitution maybe, but just use every equation, start with the first equation and use it to solve for one of the variables in terms of the other. Uh, and then take the second equation and use that, that expression you just found to substitute, um, for that variable and, and then just keep going. You just kind of sort of keep cascading down, uh, the equations. If, if the solution, uh, if you have a linear system that only had one solution, then what you would end up doing by sort of doing this substitution all the way down is you would end up uh, with the fourth equation would eventually give you something like z equals three. Uh, so you'd have an actual numerical value for the final variable. And then you just go back up the chain and um, substitute those numerical values for all the previous variables that you'd solve for. 
and you'll get your unique numerical solution. Um, but this method also allows you to sort of figure out that you're going to need to introduce these free variables, which I've called S and T in this case. And this kind of shows you uh, how to do that. Um, so thanks for the question. Uh, anything, any other questions or follow-ups, you can leave them as a comment. Thanks for watching.